Toast Bites Chomp. Hello, friendly gamers! Welcome to another episode of Toast Bites Minis, where we take a quick look at some pretty cool indie games I played by genre or theme. Today, we're showing love to pixel art, so let's get into it. And remember, some of these games are works in progress, so what you see may not reflect the final release. Number one. Neon Abyss is a fast-paced action platformer where you play a gun-toting member of a task force sent to clean house by Hades himself. It's a roguelite, so beyond the killer soundtrack and punchy aesthetic, the highlight here is the abundance of customization that makes each run unique. Dynamically generated maps means the world of Abyss always changes, letting you explore new areas, tackle new bosses, play with new rule sets, and even unlock different endings. Items can be tailored to each run as well, with passive effects you can stack in crazy combinations, and fighting stays relatively fresh with dozens of monsters to mow down, each with their own style. If you love companions, there are pets you can find and hatch that grant different boons or assist in combat, and they evolve the longer you stay alive. Or if you want to take a break from the chaos, there are many games to enjoy like dancing or fishing. And while the game may not stack up for some against similar fan favorites like Enter the Gungeon, it still released last July to fantastic reviews, and the devs have added tons of content since, including a deluxe edition and DLC introducing new characters to play, new skills to learn, and more secrets to find. In short, with its big run and gun energy and endless choices, the game doesn't really get old, it just gets better. And you can buy Neon Abyss right now on Steam, PS4, Xbox One, free with Game Pass, and Nintendo Switch. Number 2 The Longest Road on Earth is an affecting narrative experience where you explore the lives of different characters in a series of haunting vignettes. The game's power is in its simplicity. There's no dialogue, no messy controls, no fail states or puzzles to solve. It's purely a meditative exploration of life in all its depth and mundanity, letting you sink into each chapter and interpret each character's story as you see fit. The music is also amazing, carrying the game's atmosphere and emotional weight with over two dozen sentimental tracks well produced and beautifully performed by one of the developers. That said, games like this are an acquired taste. Its slower pace, lack of end game objectives, and pared down mechanics will put it squarely in the realm of a glorified walking sim for some, while others will find it a masterpiece in its own right. So as good as it is, it still might not be your cup of tea. Slated to release this May, The Longest Road on Earth will ironically be very short at around two or three hours to complete, so you'll have to decide for yourself if it's worth it to buy. And the best way to do that is to give it a try. You can download the demo for The Longest Road on Earth and wishlist it right now on Steam. Number three. Virtuaverse is an old-school cyberpunk point-and-click adventure set in a city scarred by persistent augmented reality. You play as Nathan, a smuggler caught up in the system's underbelly as you follow the crumbs left behind by your girlfriend gone missing. On the surface, it offers up everything you'd expect from this setting. A city ruled by tech and artificial intelligence, commentary on wealth, class and rebellion, and other fear the future sci-fi themes. The sound design is spot on, the artwork is lovely, and there's a clever goggle mechanic that lets you switch between viewing the augmented world or the reality it's masking, adding another dimension to its environmental storytelling. The music is great too, with an electronic, chiptune, metal sort of soundtrack produced by Master Boot Record, an artist I've never heard of, but whose fans adore the game for his work alone. And with many players logging around 10 to 20 hours from start to finish, I wouldn't exactly call the game short for the price. Still, I only played the demo, testing out as much as I could for around two hours before completing it, so take my opinion with a grain of kosher. This is very much one of those if you can think it, you can do it, but not the way you thought kind of games, where the puzzles are often tedious or roundabout. And while I was able to work out most of what to do from hints in the dialogue or common sense, the experience often devolved into trying every action with every item to progress. Speaking of items, a common complaint is how many of them have no use, so you really need to experiment to separate the treasure from the trash. There's also a lot of slowly bouncing back and forth from point A to point B to accomplish minor tasks. Since all of the above is arguably the nature of old school packs, or PNCs for you normies, you may be right to give it a pass. What fell a bit short for me was the writing, since I wasn't that engaged by the story or dialogue overall. In spite of those reservations, the game released last May to positive reviews, with many still enjoying their time with the game even when expressing similar criticisms. For the beauty of the work the developers put into it, and some of the surprising moments you'll have, it may be worth it to pick up if you're a hardcore old school point and click fan who can't get enough cyberpunk. You can download the demo for Virtuaverse or buy it right now on GOG and Steam. 
Number four. Jumping into what may look at first glance to be more traditional, pixelized fare, Goodnight Night is a top-down dungeon-crawling RPG adventure peppered with tough battles, unexpected story beats, and dry humor. You play as the titular knight on a quest to save the world with some twists along the way. The dungeons are procedurally generated with handcrafted dynamic events that bring something unique to each campaign, and the game incorporates robust combat mechanics with dodging and parrying, strategic positioning, stamina maintenance, and stealth. There's no permadeath, though dying has its price, and the rest is just timeless RPG staples. Weapons and gear, crafting, trading, quirky NPCs, all within a medieval fantasy setting. There's even a co-op mode, so you can tackle the dungeons with a friend. The game released in early access back in February, so the developers are still working out the kinks and improving on what's to come, but what they've got so far is equal parts challenging and charming. You can check out Good Night Night right now on Steam. Number five. Since Toast Bites is open to anything I played that I found noteworthy, I sometimes include games that aren't intended to be a commercial release, and Time Out is one of them. With a visual tone inspired by games like Bioshock, it's a short narrative adventure set in a world where life is currency. The concept is lifted in part from the film In Time, led by Justin Timberlake and Amanda Seyfried. I won't spoil it any more than that, but the game is strange and pretty and kinda wonky in its own special way, doing things with perspective I either don't see enough or at all in pixel art. Released last year, it was a senior project by Christopher Lee, a student at the School of Art, Design, and Media in Singapore, and I'm sad there's no plan to do more with it. With a playtime of around 15 minutes, the game is super short, but it packs a punch, which is all the more reason for every single one of you to play it. You can download Time Out for free right now on Itch. Number 6 Eldest Souls is a boss rush action RPG where you play as a lone crusader sent to slaughter the old gods imprisoned in an ancient citadel. As the name implies, the core gameplay revolves around Souls-like hack and slash combat, with the only enemy encounters being boss battles that grant you access to new powers if victorious. Customization is key here, as the game lets you develop your build in a variety of ways. There are three fighting styles to choose from that prioritize speed, damage, or defense. Each style has its own special to unleash, and its own skill trees with modifiers you can unlock to tweak your stats and attacks. Defeating bosses grants you shards, which you can use to augment your fighting style with an additional ability, like the use of a grappling hook, or to infuse your skills with new traits that alter them wildly. The combinations are endless, so combat will vary a lot from one boss and one player to the next, making your builds more strategic. Beyond that, there is a story to follow, along with quest lines to seek out and NPCs to encounter, though I don't yet know how fleshed out those elements will be. In general, it seems like an attractive outing for lovers of brutal combat, so I'm curious to see how it goes when it releases later this year. Until then, you can wishlist Eldest Souls right now on Steam. Number 7 Sanabi the Revenant, or Sanabi, is a story-driven action platformer set in a dystopian world where you play as a retired veteran taking on a corrupt conglomerate after everyone in their city disappears. You have your own motivations for agreeing to the mission that I won't spoil, but I have to say I was surprised by how much I enjoyed this game. The artwork is fantastic, enhanced by expressive animations, sleek direction, crisp dialogue, believable characterization, and brisk pacing, all which kept me engaged throughout the demo to the point where I still thought about it days later. But the star of the show and the game's main selling point is the blend of combat and momentum-based platforming courtesy of your character's prosthetic arm. It allows you to grapple, swing, and bash your way through enemies and obstacles in a style that's as tricky as it is satisfying, though at no point what I call progression hard. Facing several enemies at once looked and felt amazing thanks to the speedy lock-on and dash, and while this kind of level traversal can easily become repetitive, a combination of responsive controls, decent checkpointing, and natural stopping points kept it fresh. If you don't like platforming, you may still like this game given how movement is modified by combat, and if you do like platforming, everything else is just icing on the cake. If I had any complaints at all, it would be that the story was handled so well that I wanted more of it, even though the platforming was fun too, and that the demo was a bit long for my taste. For me, anything over 30 to 45 minutes is excessive for this genre, especially if the demo is just the first part of the game, which this might be. Because the longer it goes on, the less I look forward to having to do it all over again when the game comes out. The exception, then, is a game where your progress in the demo carries over to the full release. 
Regardless, I loved it. So if the developers stick the narrative landing and don't fall into the trap of introducing arbitrary difficulty spikes just to pad things out, this will be one of the better made, more well-rounded indie games of this type to release in a while. The date is yet to be announced, but you can still give the demo a try and wishlist Sanabi the Revenant right now on Steam. Number 8 this is going to be a short entry because Fairy Song is easy to describe. It's a one-bit exploration game where you flutter across a landscape solving puzzles and collecting items as you go. You can interact with nearly everything, revealing secret areas, and the open world feels huge with fun characters and references to spot in the background. You can even bring a friend along to help you travel it since the game has two-player couch co-op. The controls are smooth with gamepad or mouse, and the pared down visuals are oddly satisfying, coupled with very minimal music and sound design that makes the whole experience mucho zen. So if you want to unwind with a peaceful adventure that's light on the mechanics but heavy on the Game Boy vibes, Fairy Song might be right up your alley. You can download it now for free on Itch. Number 9 Lunark is a sci-fi action platformer in the vein of 90s titles like Flashback, The Quest for Identity, which I referenced specifically because it was the first game that came to mind when I saw the characters jump and climb animations. Set on a distant planet colonized by humans, you play as Leo, an orphan uncovering his roots as a rebellion rages on around him. The game is sort of story driven in that you aren't just given an intro then dropped into an unrelated platforming slog. You learn more about the world and yourself as you explore, and there are characters to meet along the way. The mechanics are simple, with you rolling, jumping, and unlocking paths through various environments, from a bustling neon city to alien ruins. And the combat is pretty basic too. You stand or crouch to shoot patrolling enemies or bosses, find items to heal, and respawn at the latest checkpoint if you die. It isn't as dynamic as modern games, but it works as an homage to the era that Lunark draws from, with some quality of life improvements. The music is nostalgic and distinctly sci-fi in a way that makes me very happy, and what the artwork sometimes lacks in texture detail, it more than makes up for with rich animations and cinematics that are smooth and expressive. Full disclosure, I did get tired of watching Leo's hand every time I interacted with a crystal in the demo, but I eventually went from being annoyed to finding it funny and endearing. Releasing later this year, Lunark might be hit or miss depending on your taste for the genre, so if you like cinematic platformers and are hungry for a blast from the past made new, go ahead and download the demo for Lunark and wishlist it right now on Steam. Number 10 Tales of the Neon Sea is the oldest game I played on this list, but its recently announced and pending console ports makes it worth calling out. Released back in 2019, it's a visually appealing retro-style point-and-click adventure where you play as a grizzled detective trying to solve a mysterious case. The artwork is a lush blend of lighting and attention to detail that adds depth to the futuristic setting, but the hook for me was the story-driven investigations, which see you gathering and combining clues, examining crime scenes, and piecing it all together to uncover something ominous. There's a variety of puzzles ranging from embarrassingly simple to frustrating, and I was genuinely taken by it at first. It needs to be said, though, that while the game released to a very warm reception overall, it's by no means perfect. The English localization was terrible, which the developers sought to address in an update back in January, and I can't say if they succeeded. There were needless minigames and timed puzzles that detracted from the core experience, and your character's movement, the dialogue, even the narrative buildup all felt painfully slow at times. Admittedly, I only play the demo, and even there things seem to fall apart a little over time, a sentiment echoed by many who play the full game. Still, the developer added a lot of content, tweaks, and fixes since the game's release, with recent reviews reflecting a more polished and cohesive experience, albeit one that still has its quirks. Overall, I'd say that if you love the world building and artwork, and you don't mind slower paced, text heavy packs with mid range writing and mechanics that might occasionally drive you up the wall, Tales of the Neon Sea may be for thee. You also get to play as a cat in a mob sometimes, so there's that. You can buy Tales of the Neon Sea right now on Steam, and heads up for the 70% discount that ends May 1st. Speaking of cats, I'll throw in a bonus with Six Cats Under, a tiny puzzle game where you're an old lady who straight up dies, and you have to save all your cats as a ghost. It takes about 10 minutes to beat, it's fun and it's sweet. You can give it a go for free on Itch. 
And that's it for this episode of Toast Bites, but you can watch more by clicking on the playlist at the end of the video. Please help spread the word about these games by liking and sharing. Feel free to leave a comment with some pixel art titles you're looking forward to. Subscribe for more indie goodness like this, and I'll see you on the plate.